Social media platforms have transformed into de facto public spaces, but when online speech pushes the limits of acceptability, where do we draw the line? The newest episode for our CBSN Originals Speaking Frankly series explores this controversy. Here's a preview. I came to be passionate about free speech and against censorship because as an artist, as an independent artist, I make my living off being able to use my voice to speak to others, um, whether it's in song or written form. And as an out conservative, it's even more important because certain people may not like my political beliefs. Back in 2017, uh, around July or August, I had released my Make America Great Again music video on YouTube. And within a few hours, um, it got taken down by YouTube. I took it to the rest of my social media. I told my fans, my Joy Tribe, hey, listen, YouTube is censoring me. This is unfair censorship. Do you Oh, absolutely. So there is uh, this problem in the United States that when we talk about free speech, um, we often misunderstand it. Um, uh, the public and, and all of us often talk about it in the context of the First Amendment. And the First Amendment is very specific. Uh, it protects all of us as, as Americans from the government limiting our speech. And so when people talk about, well, if, if I get kicked off of Facebook, that's uh, an attack on my free speech or on my First Amendment right. Uh, that's just not true, right? That the, the companies have, a, uh, have the ability to decide what speech they will allow. They're not the government. For more on the CBS News documentary, reporter Inez Novacic joins me now. Hi there, Inez. It's great to see you again. So we regularly see these claims from people saying that they are being censored on social media. Is it a fair complaint? In fact, uh, it isn't. Uh, when we talk about censorship, especially in the context of the First Amendment, um, that is not exactly what happens to speech that is regulated on these social media platforms because they are not the public sphere. Uh, they are private companies that are providing a platform and a service to their users. So a lot of people feel that they are being censored, uh, but in fact, that is not really the correct word to use for what is happening. Well, Inez, who actually decides what kind of content is acceptable on a platform? Uh, Elaine, the, the platforms themselves, so whether it's Twitter for the Twitter platform uh, or Facebook, the leadership for the Facebook platform, each of these private social media companies have the right to regulate what content or what speech they allow on their platforms. Are different groups of people, say liberals and conservatives, treated differently on the internet? And if so, how? That's a great question, and that's sort of the, the central question uh, of this documentary. You know, you hear from both sides of whether the political aisle or any sort of social discourse or issue, that both sides feel that they are being silenced or censored. Um, it is very difficult to be able to ascertain whether that is true, because the comprehensive data that exists that could prove that has not been publicly released by these social media platforms. They are the ones who regulate their own private companies the rules that they enforce, how they enforce them. Publicly, very little is known. So, you know, definitively because of that, it's hard to say, you know, no, not at all. But from what the platforms have told me, from what the experts that I interviewed said, uh, th there is no political bias against one group or another on these platforms. That is something that the platforms say they absolutely do not engage with. Um, but it is sort of tricky because if they don't provide uh, comprehensive data publicly or to a different type of oversight investigation, um, we can't really know the answer to that question. Right, and it uh, continues to be debated then uh, without that kind of information being uh, made available. So the big unanswered question is how much responsibility do, do big tech companies actually have in moderating content? Does anyone have an answer for that? 
I mean, they will all say that they take this uh, as an enormous sort of uh, responsibility and something that they take uh, great care to enforce uh, in a way that upholds their values, that upholds this value of free speech and being able to have a, a platform that, that encourages robust speech between all types of users. So I think that all of the platforms seem to be very committed to providing um, a, a, a place where people can come and speak freely, but they do also have a responsibility to uphold the law. So they cannot allow on their platforms anything that would be illegal online. They cannot especially allow hate speech online. And the problem is, is complicated by the fact that most users do go on one of these big four big tech platforms. So if you have uh, something that you're tweeting out as a Twitter user, it is going to be seen by an exponentially large audience. So that also complicates complicates it because it isn't just how do they moderate, but how do they moderate at scale? And how do they make sure that they're getting ahead of this scale that seems to be growing every day? I mean, everyone is on one of these platforms. Yeah, absolutely. All right. It is a very timely documentary. Inez Novacic, great to talk to you again. Thanks so much, Inez. Thank you, Elaine. You can stream CBSN Originals Speaking Frankly Censorship right now at cbsnews.com slash censorship.